As a result of normal usage, eventually you may experience reduced in or outflow with your JAPSCO 29200 electric flush pump system. In most cases, implementing the pump's service kit will solve the problem, and in this video, we'll show you how to do so. But before we show you, some information about safety, tools, and materials. First and foremost, you must make certain the pump is disconnected from power while performing any service. Secondly, because you are working with a system that involves human waste, be sure to use a fresh pair of nitrile gloves as well as eye protection, and have some rags on hand. You'll need the following tools and documentation. Flathead screwdriver, a 7 16th wrench or nut driver, a 7 16th socket wrench, and needle nose vice grips. It's also a good idea to have the pump user guide on hand, as well as the service kit instructions, which are in the service kit. The system actually involves two separate pumps driven by a single motor. The intake side brings clean water into the toilet bowl, while the output side sends waste to the holding tank. The service kit has parts for both sides, and you service them one at a time. When you do, we recommend you remove the pump system from the base and perform these tasks on a workbench. Starting with the output side, remove the four screws that secure the macerator housing. Note that there are two long screws and two short screws. You may want to use a sharpie on the housing to indicate which screws came from where for easier reassembly later. Pull the housing off the base along with the gasket, then remove the vent hose. Next, press the spring washer against the wear plate with one hand while securing the needle nose vice grips to the motor shaft. Once secure, hold the vice grips in place and use the 7 16th to loosen and remove the nut that is holding the chopper in place. Release the vice grips, then remove the chopper from the shaft as if you're unscrewing it. Remove the stainless steel wear plate and gasket. Pull out the impeller. Pull off the waste pump body. Push the seal out of the waste pump body. Remove the small slinger and the O-ring. The service kit includes replacements for the following items you just removed. The two paper gaskets, impeller, waste pump body seal, and the small slinger. Place the new slinger on the shaft. This is critical as it prevents any leaking material from getting into the motor. Next, place the new seal into the waste pump housing with the spring facing away from the motor. Replace the O-ring. Then, replace the waste pump housing, being certain the vent hose attachment is in the correct position. Then, holding the waste pump body in place against the motor housing, install the replacement impeller. To do so, line up the flat spot of the impeller hub with the matching flat spot of the shaft. Bend a few of the impeller blades so it will go into the housing more easily, and push it fully into place. Line up the paper gasket on the wear plate. Match their position with the molded plastic pins, then install them together. Note that the pins assure correct positioning. Then, holding the wear plate against the body, line up the flat spot of the chopper hub with the matching flat spot of the shaft and reinstall the chopper, making certain that the chopper hub notch is facing toward the motor. Next, firmly holding the chopper in place against the body, reattach the nut until the shaft begins to turn. Then, again secure the shaft with the needle nose vice grips as you fully tighten the nut until it bottoms out and the chopper is firmly in position. Install the other paper gasket. Again, the guide pins assure it goes on the correct way. Then, install the macerator housing, holding it firmly in place while reinserting the screws. Remember, there are long and short screws. Make sure you get them back into their correct positions and tighten them down in a diametric pattern. To service the intake side of the pump, start by unscrewing and removing the control knob. Then remove the remaining screws of the flush cover assembly. Inside the cover is a cork gasket and the wear plate, and inside the flush pump housing is the control valve assembly, micro switch, and the impeller. 
pry out the impeller, being careful not to damage the plastic housing. Then pull out the control valve assembly, the micro switch, and the spring that's beneath the switch. Then remove the micro switch. Next, remove the two screws on either side of the impeller seat. Then separate the flush pump housing from the motor housing. Remove the seal inside the flush pump housing. The service kit includes replacements for the following items you just removed. The cork gasket, impeller, flush pump housing seal, micro switch, and the spring that's beneath the switch, and vent hose. Place the new seal into the flush pump housing with the spring facing away from the motor. Next, install the new micro switch, being certain to match the terminals with the wires. Install the new spring that's beneath the switch. Fully seat the connectors. This assures they won't touch. Then place the switch on top of the spring so that the switch tab sets into the slot. Line up and reattach the flush pump housing to the motor housing. As you properly do so, you will hear it snap into place. Then, firmly reattach the two screws on either side of the impeller seat, being certain not to over-tighten them. Insert the replacement valve assembly with the stem facing out until it clicks into place. Then, insert the replacement impeller, being certain, again, to align the flat section of its hub with the flat section of the shaft. Remove the wear plate from the old gasket and clean off any debris. Then, with the flat side up against the impeller, align the wear plate's indentations with the housing and press it on. Next, align the gasket with the housing Put it in place, then put the cover assembly on and reattach the screws, tightening them in a diametric pattern. Next, put the control knob back on, firmly attaching it using its screw. Turn the control knob both directions a few times, listening for the clicks that indicate the switch is operational. Finally, attach both ends of the new vent hose.